Hello, uh, thank you guys so much, lovers and friends, for joining me on my YouTube channel, Unapologetically Marina K. So, I appreciate your coming to my channel. I know a lot of you are first time viewers, so this is a channel where we talk about all things that you could possibly talk about that involve growth from finances to friendships to how to navigate things and talk to people to um, spirituality almost travel everything you could possibly imagine and so I've been getting a lot of questions regarding my book I have quite a few questions here so I'm gonna just go through a couple of them and answer them very quickly and then give you a longer answer about the questions or how specific things start fitting in. Let me just get a bit of water here. And I'm just coming from class, so I have been all over attempting to record this video. This is like uh, low-key the third time I've attempted to do this video so that means it's something that I have to get out I recorded something else too of a different subject and was not able to upload it so here we go the first question is uh, why did I self-publish did I ever can um, and did I consider like this is like two questions in one <clears throat> did I consider going through an agent? So I did publish my book on Amazon and it was a journey to get there. I mean, I definitely had linear and matrix-like thinking and I was not really, I was a little slow to accepting, you know, thinking outside of the box, should we say? So for me, it was like, I considered just like going through an agent and just thinking that was the answer and that was it but as I started growing like why why did I consider that well I wanted to do it on my own and I made a couple videos during that time I was living in Chiang Mai the f before um, just to kind of get practice in how pitching and sending query letters and kind of follow-ups would work and God kept telling me honey that is not your portion I mean I just left a class and in this school or just this organization where I take classes uh, the instructors are all published authors they'll teach you different aspects of the business and writing and so it's like so different, you know, for them to, um, they're, they're so happy about their little, like their publishing. And that is amazing. Like it's a little difficult to uh, like go through that process It's honestly, it's a mountain, especially if it's, um, a work that you're have done completely, it is a mountain. And that is definitely something to be honored and respected so much love and appreciation I'm gonna top these off because it looks like there's a glare to all of the people and supporters who have facilitated my growth I opened myself up when I got to Chiang Mai Chiang Mai is an amazing place for people who are either in the health field or in their building their own business field and yeah you find some travelers and some people who teach but where I was coming from I was spending majority of my time in co-working spaces and networking events and in masterminds I've also made another video about that so you can check that out and I'll probably put it in the box or I don't know how to <laughs> I don't know which direction it goes, but um, it was an eye-opening experience. So I just knew that I wanted to get the book out of my hands as soon as possible. And it wasn't actually me. It was the voice of God that would demand that what I wanted to get up would 
gently command me to sit down. I said, sit down and write. And I would want to get on my motorbike. I was in Vietnam by the time I published the book. And I would hear, I said, go back and write your book. Finish editing your book. And it was like springtime, which is rainy season. So you can't really go anywhere in Vietnam, in Da Nang, where I was living. And so you just enjoy the, enjoy the rain like it was in Seattle. Finish it up, submit it, and just move on with your life. So that was my personal process. That was how I came to publish the book. Um, someone asked me why I, like, what are the benefits of having Amazon or like, that's how I published the book or through an agent. So let me tell you my journey, first of all, cause like I could just, again, there's many benefits and I recommend looking into them. I was taking writing classes at this place called Hugo House, which is again, where either literary agents and like um, best-selling authors, people who have published works go and teach and learn. And it's an amazing place because there's no grades. There's, you just pay, you attend the class and it's like a conference. Sometimes it's a workshop. And it's an amazing collaborative experience. And I prefer to do it in person because like online is really nice. But again, there's a vortex that I talk about in my mastermind video. I made that maybe two years ago in Chiang Mai. But when people are learning and there's a collective energy, it's, it's, it grows. So I took this class called 13 steps to finding a publisher and an agent. And I also took a class about taking risks in your writing and saying things that maybe people are afraid to say. Anyway, like that's neither here nor there. And we'll I'll probably maybe like make an entire video on just like classes and how I've been doing it. But um, I uh, just published a book and in that is like full details of, you know, uh, how I ended up homeless and kind of what that situation looks like and what I had to do kind of, um, which has been my YouTube videos, just kind of like coming out of that space. And I didn't care at first but it takes a lot of guts to be very vulnerable and raw. At first, I just didn't care. And then I started really considering all of the very personal things that I was sharing and grew quite quiet <laughs> and introverted. And I think when it comes to like a very matrixy kind of situation and coming from Asia and then like a different culture in America where people and specifically in the Pacific Northwest, you know, the vibe of people is not exactly like, Hey, let's go to dinner. It's known as something called the Seattle freeze. <clears throat> so kind of coming out of, um, law school and then losing my house and my car, having maybe $200, $300 in the bank, working two jobs to do my best to make ends meet living in a situation that wasn't quite comfortable always like doing what I could to pay or like let them know I wasn't going to be staying there paying off bills at the same time at like a 10 or 12 dollar an hour job it wasn't a lot of money and so I would get gifts and stuff like that but it would be like a hundred dollars well like when you're negative 25 in the bank and you're hungry or you're or your your tire pops like it's hard so I came to Seattle after um, 10 months in Mexico Iwatimala. and um, I started at the beginning I was living in a hostel working and I just knew that I had to write this book I don't really I can't explain what that felt like just kind of like there was something inside of me that was growing and I kind of equated it to a pregnancy. I've never been pregnant, but it felt like 
there was something inside of my stomach growing or like it's like a seed another person described it as a fire but it was an impulse so I had nowhere I didn't know where to begin I was again working three different jobs I was bartending at this place called the Showbox. I was serving at this place called Gordon Beers I was working in an Indian food truck and I was um, making smoothies <clears throat> at like a gym kind of like health food store smoothie spot so all of this I was like saving as much money as I possibly could but with no savings and hundred and eighty three dollars in Seattle I just knew that what I had to focus on was my education so I paid out of pocket for every class I could find but Marina K I don't have a place you know where I'm at don't worry there's a lot of libraries I loved Seattle so much because although I was paying for a lot of classes there were so many classes offered for free so the Seattle Public Library puts on something called Seattle Rights and every weekend even Saturday and Sunday there are different workshops hailed so you can get as much writing information and conferences as possible whether it's like learning about children's book or how to build a perfect story structure or how to um, ethically do research while you're writing historical fiction to how to write romance novels and different elements of it it's just a taste it's like two hours but enough that you could come back and feel like you really learned something so I had to start from scratch I was I went to law school and like you know a writing is not I mean I'm not really too familiar with the literary world my parents did work as professors so I just understood the higher education world that was about it um, and you know they kind of were a bit uh, <laughs> elitist if you could say and so um, I understood that that would probably be the mentality of a lot of people outside so when I chose to self-publish I didn't really understand everything I just had met someone in Chiang Mai who gave me a password to an e-learning course that was online on how start to finish about um, publishing your book through Kindle Direct Publishing so to answer the question, what are the benefits? Well, traveling the world helps, even if you're staying in a hostel, that's probably one of the best places to travel, to meet people, to make friends, because these people are all over the world, and it's like a very low-key situation. When publishing on Amazon, you have the ability to, this one product that you have in one market is now global. So meeting all of these people yeah, from Canada, guess what? There's an Amazon Canada. When you meet people from Japan, guess what? There's an Amazon Japan. In Mexico, Amazon Mexico. Um, there's a UK, there's an um, Australia. I think there's about 15 different markets. And every time people read your book, you continue to receive royalties. So um, for me, it was... I was just traveling. I don't really know what's going on. I just know that I need to get this book out of my hands and like I can't look at it again and I don't want to look at this in five years and be like some of the people around me who were like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll know when it's my time. You know what? My time was now. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm like slapping the back of my hand to make a point. Like, my time was now. I could not wait. God was telling me to publish it. So like this long process that I had initially, I think somebody else asked like, what is the, um, let's see, what was my process like when I was applying for literary agents and publishers? So <clears throat> when I first started, I've made this very beautiful spreadsheet and I had tons of values in it the first was the name of the agent the next was um, what was what the name of the agency was what their position was within the agency how many like um, 
like people they take on and what type of benefits they had like or uh, rights should we say some agencies promote that they have world rights some claim that they have movie rights and some just like are local <laughs> like there's some that you know uh, unless you've traveled and somebody was reading it and they dropped that off at it at you know some bookstore or a hostel in Malaysia or a hotel you may not be picking that up there so some of those things some values were more important to me than others and um, it was a process like I was so happy to get a rejection letter because as we know in sales which everyone is so good at sales is that it's one of the best things to get a no, which means you're that much closer to a yes. So I did like publish, yeah, I got my first rejection letter. I'm like happy about it. That means good things are about to come. No, 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 no. Guess what? Yes. And so I just got tired of it. That was my process. I was spending a lot of time like very meticulous, almost like in alphabetical order and like, what types of, um, like, who else have they represented? That was a process. And learning about the query letters and, like, um, what the communication style looks like. It was, I mean, it's hard when, just in general, like, <laughs> life in general is not, like, the most perfect process. But it's an amazing one. So... This process that I had was a spreadsheet of tons and tons of agents until I got to the point where I just said, you know what, I don't want to look at this anymore. I have been looking at this for two years now and the pressure I was getting spiritually to release it, like it was just like I wanted to just give birth and I still couldn't understand where this like pregnant feeling was coming from <laughs> but it was just like growing and growing and growing and I'm like I, I, I don't even know what this is about so that was a process I like dropped a few things and like um, just realized like I want to be in control of what happens with my book it's essentially my own business so an agent can help but as I took 13 steps to landing a publisher agent this literary agent let me know and she was in marketing well marketing every agent is kind of marketing but they let me know that it's me who sells the book she used How Stella Got Her Groove Back, which is a huge book, which was turned into a major motion picture, became a bestseller because the author hustled about it. So if I was going to do it anyway, it was seemed more important for me to do it on my own terms. And so these were messages I was getting, and I appreciated it. The next question is, how many copies have you sold? Honestly, I don't know, and sometimes I feel like I don't care. To me, that's not um, a measure of my success. What's a measure of my success is that it's being read. What's a measure of my success is, like, the feedback that I've been getting. So copies are okay, but if I think this was in one of the... Um, training videos but people can buy sympathy copies of your book and never open up a page if you I spent all that time writing and energy and tears and blood and sweat and patience and just like nurturing it like a child I'm not worried about everybody having a copy I'm, I'm, I'm most concerned with how did my experience or these words affect you and your being so on that note, there was another question regarding feedback. What kinds of feedback have I received from the book beyond Amazon? So um, 
this to me is one of the biggest compliments. Sometimes people were telling me that it was so hard for them to finish reading. I don't know if you've ever read Push by Sapphire. Um, it turned into a major motion picture called Precious. And just halfway through the film, your heart is like breaking and you don't want to keep reading like roots. Like it's so painful, but you're right there. And so that to me has been, um, I've received responses like, I find your writing very real. Um, and there were specific scenes I talk about my, like, a couple of family incidents that was not pretty and people just really relating and saying, you know what, I know I've had that father or I was afraid of my father or um, I know what it was like to have a mother that, like, could have done more but she didn't. Um, or what my personal experience was with sexual violence, like people who had to stop reading once I was in a particular place. So this is so beautiful to me. This is in the response. Like, um, when an experience, when I'm writing about my own experience and I'm saying that people, I've taken people there, it's not just there in this experience, it's there within themselves and it's just this mirror and they have no choice but to look and it's very close. And it's to trigger other people, like I did another a video in the past about triggers, it's to trigger other people to walk them home, to show them, listen, you may have a little bit more work to do about this specific situation. Now, mind you, the book is not all like sadness. It, it, it does talk about things that catapulted me to get to a different place so I could, um, it just seems superficial if I just said I got a one-way ticket and, you know, it was great. I guess that's kind of what you would say to somebody if they were checking out online. Beep, beep. So what made you go? Eh, this time. But like, I'm, I'm a sister, you know what I'm saying? Like, I talk to you guys in my sister voice. I'm like, okay, just what really happened? Like, really what, what went down? So because I need to know this is also something I need to share. Uh, it's a full story when you say, okay, I see why you did that. And, and I don't know what it was that needed to be pulled out of me to, to share that. But that was also um, a question like I had within myself. Are you okay to tell it? I did share this before that initially the book was written for me and then my sister because... Um, sometimes we can't share things completely and you want to let people into your world and, and let them know really like while all this was happening I just need you to know these and these and these and these and these and these and these things but I want you to know I love you above all so it actually turned into just kind of like publishing it and the whole world could see it the whole point was to publish it and it was just written for me it wasn't so much that my desire was to um, you know, let me put it to you this way. Earl Nightingale says money is a direct proportion to your service. So service comes first and then money comes later. As long as I can serve people with my words, then that's okay. It's, it's not like give me the fire and then I'll get the wood. <laughs> and you have to chop down trees. You have to go and get the wood. You have to stack it in a different place. You have to either like, depending on how you're lighting the fire, either like, you know, rub the wood together or like get, um, a lighter and ignite it. So it takes some time, but this is my advice. Just be prepared for whatever is, um, your journey is and know it's going to be an amazing glorious journey <laughs> and if it doesn't have any emotion then you got to ask yourself what the heck is going on and and be prepared to be vulnerable a lot of times in writing um, especially from a very and deeply personal space it's of the utmost importance to be raw and vulnerable 
and explore emotions and places and depths within yourself that you know maybe you weren't prepared to do but when you do the most beautiful glorious things occur uh, let's see if I have another question I think that was pretty much it again I'm gonna give you guys uh, a little bit of advice and I'm at 25 minutes so <laughs> this is like the perfect time to say good night do some more reading um, but don't wait yes okay there's time where you have to be away from things but if there's something aching inside of you to let it out even if it's a story get it done don't wait and say at least I wrote it if you have the ability which every single one of us does we're, we're becoming outdated in print so literary agencies are great if they can upgrade online but for right now where people are going in this very digitalized um, AI space it's an amazing thing to be able to do this by yourself remember when you were really young I think I also have a YouTube video about this I have a really young friend and when I went to go and see him here in Seattle the first day I met him he's the cutest kid ever I I saw him coloring and he took a stapler and he stapled three four five six staples together and colored images and he said I'm publishing a book and I asked him for his autograph on my arm because I had no paper and he was so humble to do that and this kid is like I look so much into the light of this child that I my heart lit up there was no hesitation to or doubting or second-guessing he just published it and it wasn't a big deal staple staple here like what if if it ends up in the trash he doesn't care he did what he wanted which was to let it out so if there's something inside of you that's aching to let out try not to think of any excuses remember the difference between the 99 or the 95 percent of people and the five percent of people is that most people find excuses I think I made a video actually I did um, entitled like pet peeves for people who take action and saying oh yeah I should I could I wish oh but you know I got kids and oh yeah like all of this is excuse oh I would have come to your house or I would have applied for that job but da, 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 but it's but 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 and sometimes we don't have time for that like people who want to move forward will find a reason to do it and others who don't make an excuse not to do it don't make an excuse this is your story this is your ability to set yourself free and if no one reads it okay you got it off your chest and when a lot of people read it amazing they're gonna hug you and tell you how much they've appreciated that perspective a lot of times people have been like concerned even in fiction writing oh if I tell you my idea someone's gonna take it hold on one of the first things that's like so important to remember is that how many boy meets girl stories are there? How many um, little kid who just gets saved in the perfect amount of time and has an incredible relationship with a mentor or a young girl or like his new best friend, how many stories of there are there? The fact that it, you're telling it is what makes it so unique. There are so many, but just like your fingerprints they're unique no one else has your set of fingerprints on this universe this is your distinct mark and so is your storytelling so I think that's about it um, you guys thank you so much for your time and I just love you guys so much like such positive energy and just watching and supporting be sure to support each other so with that said, I'm going to go have a good night. You guys take care. Bye. Thank you.